What an awesome time to be alive in such a time as this. And I am the whistleblower. I am revealing information that is deemed private about the so-called church. And I've already called the church out as being a huge Ponzi scheme. The house of David is like the man that drew his bow without even aiming. This is seen in 1 Kings 22 and 34. And a certain man drew a bow at random and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore, he said unto the driver of his chariot, turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Now, that's exactly what we did right here in the house of David. I was doing daily exhortation and wasn't even focused on Paul, but the truth came out and we are here to let you know that Paul is a wolf in sheep clothing. Now, you're not going to find any ministry online such as this one. We are actively every day exposing Paul as the founder, the father of the Christian church. And we have revelation on this channel that you won't hear nowhere else. Now, let's continue to talk about how the church is so blind. Now, let's go to Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, why do you think he said all of that? He said all of this because he knew you would be calling the Son of Man God in the future. So he's setting the record straight right here. He's telling you right off top, I'm not a man, and I'm not a liar. I'm not the Son of Man, and I don't repent. All these things right here, Is what human beings do. And God is trying to tell you right now that he is not a man. Just like he was trying to tell them back then. They understood this. They understood that God is not a man. Well, duh. And you need to learn this truth, okay? You need to open up your ears, get the wax out of it, and let me speak this in your spirit. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man. So God is telling you that he is not the son of man. Sons of men repent. And if you read in the Quran, the Quran tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise Jesus up to himself. He will clear him from the charges that you've put on him. And he will also settle the differences that him and the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, have, okay? There's differences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jesus have. So you can't paint that narrative that Jesus was just this perfect little sinless creature. No, no. The Quran doesn't say that. The Quran lets you know off top that there are some differences That God Almighty, that's what you call him, you should call him, because he's not Jesus. He will settle with the prophet Isa in the future. Now, God doesn't go into all of the junk mail, okay? Whatever they disagreed about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk to the prophet Isa in private about. That's why when we go back to Numbers 23, 19, It says, God is not a man. And he's saying this because he knew you would be calling Jesus God. Then he goes on to say that he should lie. In other words, I'm not going to say in the future I'm a man. God is not a man that he should lie. So he's not going to be a man in the future. Then he's telling you neither is he the son of man. He's telling you, look, I am not Jesus. And we know that Son of Man is mentioned over 82 times in the Gospels. It's mentioned about 93 times in the book of Ezekiel, okay? And God is telling you, look, I'm not a man. I do not waver. I do not repent. 
Now, God doesn't pray. Open up your ears. God does not pray. Jesus prayed. The disciples prayed. All of the people in the book prayed. God does not pray. That's right. So God is not a man, and you are going to be found guilty if you are accusing him of being a man. Now, I want you to open up your eyes a little bit. Paul is the scar. When you watch the movie Lion King, there is a scar, okay, who killed the father. He couldn't kill Simba, okay? All he could do was lie on Simba. And this is going into how Paul, he killed the father's message. He killed the Old Testament. You know, Paul's 13 letters were like the skinny cows that devoured the fat flesh cows, which is the Old Testament. Paul killed the father, okay? And what he tried to do was kill the son. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued him. And now Paul is lying in your book, in your Bible you have right now, telling you that Christ died for your sins, which is a complete lie. Now Paul could not sacrifice Jesus. Allah rescued him. The only thing Paul could sacrifice was himself and the church. And the Christians and the Jews will be a ransom for the Muslims. That is seen in the Hadith. So open up your eyes, man. God has been trying to show you through the movie Lion King. Okay? There's one who betrayed us, who was one of us, who was of the nation of Israel. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. The symbol is the wolf. His name is Saul or Paul. This is the man who killed Jesus through lies. He committed murder through lies. He is the man that destroyed everything God taught us in the Torah. God tells us that a son shall not die for the father. But Jesus is portrayed as being crucified in the New Testament. And Paul is teaching us that one righteous man died for all men to be justified. That is complete heresy. That right there is nothing but a lie coming from the father of lies. And that is Paul. Now I want to show you some more stuff. How in the Hades we have a prison in hell named Bulas, which is Paul, which is the name of Paul. And I'm going to show you how Scar is in the Bible. You're going to see that one of Paul's names is Scar. He is the Scar. He is the man with all the scars. He tells you he bears in his body the marks of his Lord, Jesus Christ. That's right. Now going on, let's go to Genesis 38 and 7. And Ur, Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Now, God kills sons. Isn't that amazing? God killed this firstborn son because this son was wicked. Now, verse 8, And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him too. So God didn't kill both of the boys. Okay, God lays the sons down. Now, according to Exodus 20, we are supposed to honor the father, and we're supposed to honor the mother. Now, in the New Testament, Paul teaches us all to honor the son. He wants us all to honor the son. Now, this right here is what we call the actual opposite, like north versus south. Everything that God taught, everything that Paul taught is going completely opposite of one another. They are a Opposing one another in the way they teach. Okay. God has the truth. Paul has the lie. Now, this is something you should study right here. Let's go to 
Genesis 38 and 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold, twins were in her womb. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying, this came out first. Now this right here, my brothers, this is going into Paul. Paul is the one who came out first. Okay. He has right now the largest religion on the planet and it's called Christianity. He is the one who came out first. So the midwife bound him. She put a scar, get it, scarlet thread upon his hand. She bound him. This is a picture of Paul. We're going to come back to this. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold, his brother came out and she said, how has thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore, his name was called Perez. Now, Perez is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And we see that Zerah and Perez represents two religions. Now, Zerah represents Christianity. Its founder is Paul. And then we have a religion called Islam, whom Jesus is the Messiah over it. Okay, so we have Jesus versus Paul. This is seen all through the twin stories when we look at Jacob and when we look at Esau. Okay, that's going into the prophet Esau. Peace be upon him. Jacob stole his brother's birthright. Okay, Jacob came out first. He did exactly what Zerah did. Okay, he took his brother's inheritance. And remember, Esau, or Esau, he said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give Jesus that judgment to put upon the Christian church. And the first thing he will destroy in the future is the Christian church. Soon as he break free from the dominion of his brother. Because right now, Christians have the kingdom. Right now, Paul's church is number one in command. But there's coming a day when the prophet Esau will come to the aid of the Muslims and he will destroy the cross. OK, Christianity will be eventually destroyed. So we have scar. Now, let's go to another story. With this scar character. This is going to be Joshua 2.18. Behold. When we come into the land. Thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread. In the window. Which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father. And thy mother. And thy brethren. And all thy father's household. Home unto thee. And it shall be. That whosoever shall go out of the doors. Of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if you thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. Now watch this. Verse 21. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. Now, this is going into the Hadith that we have of Paul being the name of the prison in hell. Now, Rahab, you can spell Arab. And the nation of Islam has the truth about Paul that he has a prison in hell. It's named Bulas in the Arabic tongue. Now she hid the two spies. Now what are the two spies? Who are the two spies? Okay, that's a good question. Who are the two spies that was hid for Joshua? 
that is going into the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and that is going into his Mahdi of his stock. That is going into the two messengers in Islam. Okay, we know that Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, but according to the Hadiths, there is coming also one from his stock who will be a man of justice. These are the two spies that Rahab hid on her rooftop. Okay, now this is because people is blind. They don't see this. I see this. So when I've been studying the Bible for 20 plus years. And then when I read the Quran and when I read the Hadiths, I take off. Now, you can't do that because you have no history of studying the previous scriptures. That's why a lot of the stuff just goes right over your head. You don't catch it because you don't have a history of studying the Bible. The two spies that Rahab or Arab hid, okay, is going into the prophet Muhammad and going into the Mahdi and the thread that's going into the truth that we have about Scar of him being in hell. This story is seen in Luke 16. Jesus gave us a parable about a rich man and a poor man. And the rich man in hell was wanting somebody to come back from the dead. This is exactly what his ancestor Saul did. And this is exactly what Saul in the New Testament did. He teaches us that Jesus Christ will rise from the dead. And the person who brought that message in Luke 16, that rich man was in hell, okay? Now, this is the truth. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. Ask your pastor, ask your camp leader, what was Jesus talking about when he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees? See what explanation you get. I'm telling you, beware is going into a wolf and the leaven of the Pharisees is going into the teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This is the reason why the rich man was in hell. He wanted somebody to come back from the dead. And the real Abraham told the false Abraham, there's a great gulf fix in between us. In other words, you can't come back from the dead. How are you teaching that the prophet Isa came back from the dead? OK, and Jesus told us right there in the parable, it is impossible for one to come back from the dead. Both of the Saul's had this problem. OK, the Old Testament King Saul brought back Samuel from the dead. OK, by going through a witch. And we know that this was a familiar spirit. OK, because there's a great gulf fixed in between us. You can't pass from this life and go over into the dead. Okay, there's a great gulf fixed. And so here we have both of the Saul's guilty of wanting to bring someone back from the dead. That lets you know that both of the Saul's was involved in witchcraft. Okay, Christianity ain't nothing but witchcraft. And there's coming a day when we will not allow a witch to live. We won't suffer them. To live anymore because we have a gun, we have a sword, we have a jihad in our religion, which is something missing in Christianity. Think about it. The God of the Bible was all about fighting, 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 fighting. But then you get to the New Testament and it's like, live in peace, live in peace. Something happened. Something is strangely wrong. Then when you go to the Quran, the Quran talks about fighting, 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 fighting. This is how we receive rewards in Islam. OK, fighting in the cause of Islam is one of the best things you can do. So I always knew something was wrong in Christianity. I just couldn't put my finger on it because the God of the Bible was all about fighting. But all of a sudden, in the New Testament, it's all stopped. And then it continues in the Quran. Okay? So, brothers, stop being blind. Stop being blind. Y'all need to stop. Stop it. Stop being blind. Okay? Christianity is nothing but a Ponzi scheme. Rahab was saved by works. And this is going into how the Arabs believe 
and being saved by works. This is going into how the Muslims, us Muslims, believe that we are saved by our works. However, in Christianity, according to the rich man theology, Paul, we are saved by grace and not by our works. That's why I teach Christianity is a Ponzi scheme. Nobody is talking about this, okay? Christianity is a Ponzi scheme. It promises heaven with little to no works. Christianity is supposed to have healing, miracles, answers to prayer. Jesus' name is supposed to be a signed blank check for you to fill it out for whatever you want. But it's a scam. And I am the whistleblower on it. I am blowing the whistle every day. You know, Christianity is like a Medicaid scheme, you know, that they're doing nowadays. All these false offices, which is going into the church buildings, and these false supplies, okay, with no healings, no miracles, okay, no answers to prayer, no angels, no visitation from God, and finally, the church has no prophecy. But yet the pastors are collecting all this real money every day, okay? When you gonna wake up? When you gonna wake up and realize that Christianity is too good to be true? How in the hell you gonna go to heaven so easy? All your sins is gonna be forgiven so easy. You ain't gotta do nothing, okay? According to Paul, you are saved by grace and not of works. When James tells us that every man is going to live according to his works. James tells us that as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. Okay, Paul is the opposite of James. James teaches works. Rahab believed in works. Islam believes in works, but Paul believes in that sloppy, agape grace. Now, I'm going to get back into the church being blind. And when we pick up, we're going to start off at Joshua chapter 7. We're going to take our time and we're going to read Joshua chapter 7 again. And we're going to read it slowly. But I encourage you, brothers, to stop being blind. God has entrusted us with the Bible. And I'm not talking about the New Testament. There's things in the Old Testament, y'all, that we are literally casting behind our back. Some of the most powerful, potent revelations is right there in the story of Jonah. It's right there in the Old Testament. If you would just open up your eyes and see that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is being repeated over and over and over again. Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing Jesus warned about, okay? And who has prophecy? Let me ask you a question. Who has prophecy? The church don't have prophecy. We have prophecy in Islam, okay? We have prophecy in the house of David, okay? Let me tell you something. I know for a fact that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing. You can pay attention to what I'm saying and watch it in the future. And I'll tell you this. Jesus didn't die yet. Jesus is not going to die until the last day. Now, you can mark my words. You can scribble it down. I'm telling you, this is the truth you can take to a bank, okay? Get your money the same day. Now, I'm not a prophet. No, I'm not. Okay, how do I know? Because the Quran has the truth and the Bible has the truth. All I'm doing is showing you what's in the scriptures. According to the scriptures, the egg of the killing of the firstborn is last, not first. Jesus didn't die yet. You can take that to the bank. Okay, wake up and stop being blind. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.